find out what adaptations generally look like, what the different stages are, and how you'll feel in them, all in this video. I've helped a ton of people adapt in the past and have noticed the same patterns occurring time and time again. You'll be able to know what to expect during your adaptations and will therefore have a higher chance of succeeding because you can take the necessary steps to ensure that you're prepared for the worst. Hi guys, and welcome back to the channel. My name is Crimson Flower. I'm a main author of Polyphasic.net, the community recommended resource for polyphasic sleepers. I'm also the owner of the Polyphasic Discord, and I'm a moderator on the r slash polyphasic subreddit. If you are interested in more polyphasic sleep related content, be sure to subscribe and hit the bell icon so you don't miss out on anything in the future. Let's start from the beginning. You decide to start a polyphasic adaptation. After you start your adaptation, your body is going to go through several different defense mechanisms in order to ensure that it gets all the vital sleep it needs. Uh, examples of these defense mechanisms can be introducing vital sleep in the beginning of a sleep uh, in form of SOREM and SOSWS, uh, but also kicking out light sleep in the core and replacing it with REM and SWS. In general, a complete adaptation will usually take over four weeks, greatly depending on how strict you are, personal differences, your schedule, so on. Um, the whole adaptation process comprises roughly of four stages, with around six to ten days for each of them, except for the last stage, which is a bit longer. Uh, Though the length of these stages greatly depends on the adaptation method used, the schedule picked, and so on. Regardless, adaptations are completed gradually, and changes in sleep deprivation symptoms can be seen as time progresses. So let's get into the specific stages. We label them as adaptation stage 1, 2, 3, and 4, and each stage contains unique characteristics. We'll start by explaining the first stage. So in this stage, falling asleep for naps can be pretty tricky if you don't have previous napping experience. Uh, in case you've been smart and moved the start of your core to begin at the same time as your new core neopolyphasic adaptation, falling asleep for the core shouldn't be that difficult. Uh, however, if you haven't done this, it can be quite tricky to fall asleep for this sleep as well. When looking at your sleep quality, it's going to be the same as when you slept monophasically, because your sleeps haven't repartitioned yet. You're going to have a very high percentage of light sleep in your core, your SWS might be fully completed if you have over three cycles in your core, but if you have below that, you might be suffering from it too, and your REM sleep is going to be greatly reduced. Jumping forwards, your sleep cycles are going to be the same length as when you slept monophasically, and interestingly, you might be able to get a glimpse of what it feels like to be adapted to a polyphasic schedule during this time with a good mood, high energy, and so on, uh, though this assumes that you've started your adaptation without any previous sleep yet. Because if you have uh, some previous sleep deprivation, it's going to be a much shorter stage and it's going to be more intense already from the get-go. Speaking of pre-existing sleep deprivation, this stage is going to get shorter on extreme schedules with a lower sleep total, like nap-only schedules and other extreme schedules. Okay, let's talk about the second adaptation stage. When you enter this stage, you'll feel a clear drop in energy during the day. Waking up becomes harder, and feelings of sleepiness becomes more apparent as sleep that is accumulated. During this stage, falling asleep will be much better and easier than in the previous stage, uh, both for your naps and course. You'll start to experience random waves of sudden tiredness during the day that will eventually align to your desired sleep times. Uh, though this will most likely happen in either stage 3 or 4. The second adaptation stage will also become shorter on more extreme schedules. After you've passed this stage, you enter the third adaptation stage, and this is clearly the most problematic one, where the most number of people fail. In this stage, your sleep depth has accumulated enough to cause oversleeps, uh, and it's extremely important that you set appropriate alarms ahead of time in order to minimize the chance of oversleeping. The difficulty on this adaptation stage greatly depends on the schedule you've chosen and adaptation method used, uh, where extreme schedules will have a much more intense third stage. This stage will be longer compared to the previous two on extreme schedules. I'll explain it like this. Uh, if you start 
your adaptation of which sleep that and the length of the first and second adaptation stage add up to one week. Uh, this stage is going to then be around two weeks long. So the total sum of stages one, two and three is usually going to be around three weeks. So the shorter the first stages are, the longer this one is going to get. I should mention that this stage is not only bad things, most people will experience an improved ability to remember dreams in their naps or course. Okay, <laughs> that was all the good things in this stage. <laughs> Falling asleep becomes very hard for some sleeps, uh, because the body is in the middle of realigning its energy dips with your desired sleep times. Um, though, as a sort of final punch in the stomach, when you actually manage to fall asleep easy, it's going to be very hard to wake up. So, so you're stuck in a pretty bad place. Either it's really hard to fall asleep, or it's really easy to fall asleep, but you wake up feeling really bad. Now, gradual improvements are expected to happen during this stage as your body gets used to the new sleep schedule. However, the tiredness is expected to increase to finally peak at the end of this stage. Random premature wakes can happen during this stage, uh, but they should eventually subside, so you don't need to worry about it too much. If you start waking up before your alarm consistently, you can move your alarms to match that new sleep duration, uh, because it can be expected that your sleep stages have shortened. The third stage is, by the way, where your sleep deprivation will start to get repaid. Now, I want to warn you, if you undersleep during this time by skipping naps or course or parts of naps or course, you are going to drag this stage out. So you should avoid undersleeping if possible, but don't compensate by flexing or moving sleeps instead, because that's going to disorient you even more. Some observations suggest that your sleep stages can become more stable during naps and course, and that your sleep cycle lengths can shorten as because of it. These observations are currently being investigated on a large scientific scale, so look out for any more real risk information on that. So provided you get this far without significantly oversleeping, you should reach the fourth adaptation stage. Gradual improvements can be seen during the course of this stage as time progresses, uh, where most people will start to experience natural awakenings before the alarm rings. People also have more vivid dreams, uh, fall asleep easier and consistently. Uh, waking up becomes easier and alertness is improved during the day. Feelings of tiredness will sharply rise before bedtime uh, and then you'll feel fresh again after waking up. The only real negative is that this stage uh, can take a very long time to complete often several weeks. Compared to stage 3, there's a clear drop in tiredness, uh, almost like returning to stage 2, uh, which should also decrease as time passes. Now, I want to make something clear. Undersleeping during this stage uh, might take you back to stage 3 for a while, because this is also a stage where sleep debt is being repaid. So, you should avoid undersleeping in this stage if possible. Now, it's very important that you know that some people might occasionally experience uh, signs of this adaptation stage in previous adaptation stages, um, which can lead to them feeling that they have adapted or are close to adapting, uh, putting down alarms, not using as many, and then BAM! Get back into adaptation stage that they are actually in and fail because of it. So don't do that. Always assume that the worst is going to happen and keep your alarm set up at optimal levels. Let's talk about so-called fast adaptations a bit. In the past, people have suggested that it might be possible to adapt to schedules like Uberman uh, in a very short time of only two weeks, with most sleep deprivation symptoms dissipating after only a week. In reality, however, this seems to be a very atypical experience, as a significant portion of people oversleep within the first week of adaptation. Those who last do not experience signs of improvement after only seven days. On more extreme schedules, it's common to experience extreme ups and downs in alertness and tiredness as the adaptation progresses, and this can give a false sense of adaptation, which commonly ends with a sleep crash and a swing from extreme alertness to extreme tiredness. This usually happens on day 5 to 10 on these schedules, and it's where the actual hard part begins. 
So the idea of being adapted to an extreme schedule like Uberman or Dimaction in only 7 to 14 days is fanciful at best. And it's most likely going to require at least three weeks of persistence before the sleep deprivation symptoms start to become dissipated. Speaking of nap-only schedules, it's actually debatable whether adaptations to these schedules are even possible for normal people, since it would require 120 minutes of sleep to account for a need of 90 minutes of REM and 90 minutes of SWS, not even considering the necessary light sleep in between. Uh, we talked about this more in a previous video, the important sleep stages. Feel free to check it out, the link will be in the description. Anyways, let's talk about how to recognize the signs that you have adapted to a schedule in order of importance. The first one is that you feel energized and productive when awake. You should experience no memory loss, an elevation in mood and a good appetite. The second sign is waking up feeling refreshed, uh, whether it's from a nap or a core, so no sleep inertia. The third sign involves falling asleep quickly for naps or cores, even if you don't prepare for a while beforehand. The fourth sign is waking up naturally from your sleeps. This requires long entrainment to your sleep cycle after months before it gets consistent. The fifth and final sign is that naps feel long and drawn out. A single 20 minute nap can feel like as much as two hours have passed. Uh, you might also remember more dreams and more vivid dreams at that. Uh, though some people will remember less dreams because of a forceful insertion of light sleep before you wake up called wake time programming. Remember when we talked about fast adaptations? Well, there's another factor that made people claim that they had adapted in a very short time. Up until the last few years, the only sign of a successful adaptation was remembering dreams in your naps. If people used the gradual adaptation method, remembering dreams in their naps often took a very short time to complete, which falsely led them to believe that they had adapted, though even though their core hadn't still repartitioned. On more extreme schedules, such as the Uberman, it's also common to experience all of these signs prior to a successful adaptation. The difference is that they often don't last. These schedules are notorious for rapid swings in tiredness, which can cause uncautious individuals who misidentify these signs as a successful adaptation to fail because of the giant swings in tiredness that follow. Okay, that's all for today. Please tell us in the comments, have you experienced these adaptation stages during your adaptations? Did you get passed through all of them? Uh, did they look different for you than I've described in the video? Please share your thoughts below. Anyways, I'll be seeing you in the next video. Nap well!